Well, we have to do it sometime, right? Today is the day we are going to power through paper clutter. Can I show them what I do with paper clutter? <laughs> but I mean, you sorted it, right? No. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom, and nobody likes talking about paper clutter, <laughs> but we gotta do it at some point, right? So in the last video, we talked about setting up your paper clutter system, and today I'm gonna show you two different ways of how you can power through your existing paper clutter very quickly. And so I do think it's worth setting up your new system of how you're gonna deal with new paper coming into your house first, because it's gonna help give us a grid of what we're gonna keep and how we're gonna store any of the existing paper clutter that we decide to keep. But I do also wanna let you know that this approach works whether you wanna go all in and gather up all your paper clutter and go through it all at once, or if you just wanna take it like one drawer or one stack at a time, it'll work for that too. So if you don't have loads of extra time or energy right now to make a big, huge mess on your dining room table, that's okay, this method will work either way. And so there's basically two different ways that I think we can approach paper clutter to get through it quickly. And so the first thing is that I think it's very important to recognize how much time and energy do I have to devote to this? Is the reason that I still have lots of stacks of paper around my house and that I haven't dealt with it because it's overwhelming to me or I simply don't have any extra time or energy to deal with it? If that's the camp you're in right now, then we need to approach our clutter a little bit differently. Now, on the other hand, if you have more time, you can be more deliberate about setting up file folders and making sure everything gets sorted into the proper categories. So no matter what side you're on, now what I wanna encourage you is to take a moment, moment to reflect on do I just need a fresh start? It's been really interesting. I love seeing all of the new words that people choose for the year. And there's been so many about vision and uh, reassessing and really taking inventory of what it is that is most important in our life and making sure that that is at the top of our priority list, right? I mean, I think, you know, most of us know the year is 2020. And so it really does have to do with clarity and vision. And in fact, I brought this game out because uh, our oldest, she set the goal at the beginning of the year that we would play a game as a family every single day. And so she even has a calendar on the side of the fridge <laughs> that we um, have hung up and they have been marking it off every day, which is so cool. And I'm so grateful that that our kids want to spend that time with us um, and it's something that she took initiative on and I think it's awesome. And so we pulled out this game the other day. We, had been, we hadn't pulled it out because the kids weren't quite old enough, but oh my goodness, if you have ever played this, it is, it's awesome. It is super fun. It's addicting. We've actually been staying up later because the kids are like, can we just play one more round? Gage and I are about to win. Oh, <laughs> ha, ha. Daddy's trying to stop us. <laughs> And then even last night after the kids went to bed, Tom and I played another round just by ourselves. And we're like, we're such nerds, right? But it was really fun. And as I was looking through the stuff that a lot of us accumulate, I thought it would be helpful to have some perspective about what it is that we're keeping this year. And are we in need of a fresh start? Okay, so again, what does this mean? So like I came across this folder that I made like four years ago that says recipes. So if I saw a recipe I liked, I printed it out and I put it in here. The problem is until I just came across it again, I'd never pulled any of the recipes out, never tried them, or I didn't even remember it was there. And so in the past, things like this would have hung me up because I'd have been like, oh, well, should I keep them? Where could I put them that I'll remember them? But now when I look at, okay, is trying new recipes import, more important to me or having more time to spend with my kids? Well, when I look at it that way, it is a no brainer that I would rather just have time to play games with the kids or to be outside in the garden or things like that. So another thing would be like magazines. Uh, you know, I know how these accumulate. Do I just need a fresh start? Would it be nice to actually start out the year with my magazine wherever I store them with it empty? And you know, maybe there are some things in there of an old magazine I, that I thought maybe I liked or an idea I liked, but do I just need a fresh start? Do I just need to get rid of all of the magazines and catalogs and flyers and newspapers in my house? and just have a fresh start this year. I think so many of us, we don't, unless we move, we very seldom give ourselves a fresh start where we can just start over again. We can start collecting some new magazines. Maybe my interests have changed or there's something else that I would rather be looking at now than the things I did in the past. Or maybe it would just feel good not to even have that stuff in my house anymore. 
so there's the stuff that is is inconsequential. Obviously, if you got rid of a magazine and you got audited, it's not gonna matter, right? So we have that stuff, like the magazines, the recipes. I had like, you know, you get stuff in the in the mail and it says like, bonus gift, right? And so I'm like, what's the bonus gift? Well, again, do I want to have to have something else in my house I have to manage and I have to find a place to keep it and I have to remember that it's there to use it? Or do I want more time with my kids? Let's see, what else? like birthday cards. If it's from someone special, I think it's awesome if you keep it. And I hope you have a place that it's easy to revisit them if you are gonna keep them. But I've said this before, for me, keeping greeting cards from someone that just like signed their name and didn't write any special sentiment or anything, I'm still grateful for it, but but I'm not gonna keep this as inventory that I have to manage. Okay, so, so there's kind of like the easier stuff that's like, well, yeah, okay, I can get rid of catalogs and junk mail and all of that. But then we get down to the things that actually are stuff that we have to keep. And so when we do come across things, you know, old bills, uh, tax records, then there's two things we can do with it. We can set up files for it, we can distribute it into the files, or you literally could just take a box or a bin and you could say, I don't know if this is important, I don't know if I need it, I'm just gonna put it in here and go on. Okay, what's this? Um, it's my benefit package from my insurance. Could I potentially need to revisit this? Could they change it without me knowing or something? I'm just not sure. Okay, I'm gonna put that in there. This, nope, that I don't, I don't need to keep. This is, okay, for our dog, for her records of her shots, yeah, I should probably keep that. This is, um, this was from when we set up an account, but we don't even have that account anymore, and I, so we don't need any of like that welcome packet stuff. Um, same with this. This was all stuff from setting up an account that we've since closed. I keep the payoff, but I don't need all of those welcome documents and starter checks and all of that kind of stuff. This stuff, yep, this has um, some stuff for improvements we've made to our house. Okay, that's gonna go in there. This is junk mail, thank you note, junk mail, coupons. I don't, I'm not gonna try and manage coupons. I'd rather spend time playing with my kids. Nope, none of this. Old newspapers, gone. Okay, here we go. Artwork. This is super sweet. Mom and dad are the best. I love them. Love Maggie, right? This is awesome. And so I do have a bin. I have my own keepsake bin that I put some stuff in, but she literally will give these to us like every week or so. I mean, I like how I'm, it's awesome. It is so cool. But again, let's play, let's spend a time together and not try and always be archiving everything from the past. Like Christmas cards, super fun to get. I love reading them, but I just, I don't keep them, then they, they get passed on. Uh, more junk mail. Okay, like seriously, isn't it? Like you end up with like this, I was like, oh, well if I return it, I need this package to return it. It's been like six months ago, right? So I don't need that anymore, that can go. All right, so then if we end up with a bin like this of random papers, what I would suggest is just put the years on it of whatever the range of documents are in here. So might be 2017 to 2019. I'm not sure if I need these in the future documents. Of course, if it's anything important like a vehicle title, a birth certificate, death certificate, let's have a very special place to be putting that. We wouldn't put that in an all-purpose bin. Um, how about if you pay off a, a mortgage or an investment? We just stick those in with our taxes. You should keep those for seven years past when you paid it off. Otherwise, like if you buy a house, you know, yeah, you wanna keep all the title docs until while you're still in that house. If you've made any improvements, yes, keep all those while you're still in the house. But again, would you necessarily need those? Or if you had to find it, could you sort through a bin like this to find it? Yes, that's where I'm not opposed that if you just need to get through stuff quickly so you can have a fresh start this year, throw it in a box. We have our new system in place so this isn't gonna happen again in the future. Label it and then let's move on from it. Could you end up with multiple boxes of it? Yeah, I suppose. But again, if the reason we're not dealing with it is because it's overwhelming to us or we don't have the energy to deal with it, then it'd be better off to have multiple boxes in storage with a date on them as opposed to still having it piled up all around our house and cluttering up our house. I know we're wired differently. Some of you, this would horrify you, but for those of you that you're just kind of overwhelmed with it, we just need a fresh start. And so let's do whatever we need to do so we can have a fresh start and focus on the things that are more important and deserving of our time. Organizing paper or past paper from many years back does not deserve my time. It, it's not worth my time anymore. There's other things 
much more important in life. And let's move on to an organized new year and working our new system that we have in place. So oh, I'm kind of out of breath <laughs> now. I do hope this helps. This is the best way to deal with paper clutter. Just burn it. Don't look at any of it. Just take it out. If it's a bill, they'll send you another one. Uh, coming up, I'm going to show you kind of a walkthrough of our paper system. like. How, like paper clutter when it comes through the door to where it goes and moves back out again because I know there were some questions to see our like very specific paper clutter system so I'm happy to share that with you too it's just too much to do with this video so when that's available I will link to that down below but I do hope this helps and if this resonates with you about needing a fresh start I hope you give this video a thumbs up I hope you share it with somebody else I also would love it if you subscribe because we have a lot more decluttering to do this month and this year and we really enjoy spending the time with you all right, that's all for today. Best wishes with your paper clutter and I'll visit with you again soon.